What happened to those Shark Tank deals that were offered $1 million or more? Literally, every inventor that comes into Shark Tank thinks they've got a million dollar idea. But only on rare occasions have we seen inventors that get a million dollars or more. But that doesn't automatically determine the success of these businesses. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the top three Shark Tank pitches that were offered at least a million dollars. Did our favorite sharks get a return on their investments or not? Let's find out. Next into the tank is an entrepreneur who believes there's big money to be made from big scares. When Melissa Carbone came back to the tank in October of 2013 with Season 5, Episode 6 of Shark Tank, she wasn't pitching anything we were used to on the show. Her pitch was for an entertainment company called 1031 Productions, a company that she'd founded in 2009, alongside her business partner and ex-husband, Allison Richards. This episode aired just six days before Halloween, and her company was as in touch with the theme as possible. 1031 Productions is out of California that's based around installing and running temporary horror attractions. Pretty unconventional for Shark Tank. Anyways, having founded the business about three years prior, Melissa had seen her business gradually grow and expand into three attractions that they could set up in California. The company also had a record of scaring over 100,000 people since they started these events, which is pretty impressive given the company didn't exactly used to run all year round. But despite the success, former Clear Channel Communications executive Melissa Carbone wanted more for her company, hence her appearance in the tank. Hi, Sharks! My company is 1031 Productions. 1031 Productions is an entertainment company that creates, owns, and produces live attractions in the horror. Coming into the tank to impress, having a visual presentation with these horror performers in full costume, Melissa announced to the Sharks that she was seeking an investment of $2 million in exchange for 10% equity in 1031 Productions. Her troop of scary characters interacted with one of the sharks before Kevin O'Leary proceeded to joke that Melissa's enormous valuation was the only thing scary in the room. But before the other sharks could comment on her bulky asking price, Melissa mentioned that her company's most popular attraction, the LA Haunted Hayride, had already brought an impressive $1.8 million in 17 nights, with a profit range of $600,000. With the sharks being obviously impressed, Melissa continued explaining her expansion plans for the following year. She showed off other marketing credentials, simply telling these judges she was supposed to overestimate the asking price because of previous offers she had received from Hollywood companies wanting to buy 1031 Productions. That's ridiculous. For me, it is not hard to get lots of people to come to the attractions. The hard part is to make it a great experience so they want to come back. Look, this is all fun and games, but we're talking about money here. Despite Carbone's confident pitch, Kevin and Robert don't seem to be buying it and immediately opt out of the deal. Griner doesn't entirely doubt the company's profitability, however. She believes her ROI will take too long, so she's also out. I'll give you $2 million for 40%. The last two sharks weren't interested, and John made his first offer asking for $2 million for 40%. Melissa refused, saying the least she can do was give away 20% of her company. And immediately, Mark Cuban swooped in and took the deal. I'll take that offer. Done. Really? Yep. We have a deal. Wow. This offer immediately became the biggest investment in the show's history at the time. But did it pay off? To put it simply, yeah. And in contrast, Lori thought that it'd take longer for the business to be profitable. But 1031 Productions took off almost as soon as Cuban's investments came in. In line with Carbone's expansion plans, the company soon launched a New York-based haunted hayride and an immersive 12-hour scary campathon called the Great Horror Campout. In the first year for the Haunted Hayride in New York, the company brought in 36% more than its LA counterpart's second year performance. And there's also the fact that the bad weather during the time caused a dip in the turnup, but it still managed to do better than the other previous hayrides. From then on, it was only up for 1031 Productions. The company's been able to use the money from the show to expand operations from California to a wider national audience. Melissa Carbone also had to triple the size of her company's cast and crew to about a thousand. And that's not all. Since Cuban's investments. 1031 Productions has secured ticket distribution contracts with Live Nation after its CEO became an investor in the company and a deal with Ticketmaster. According to Melissa Carbone herself, 
her appearance on the tank not only made a lot of money for her business, but received much more publicity. In her own words, less than a decade after 1031 Shark Tank appearance, Melissa revealed, I have to say, the amount of time that opportunity saves us on sourcing locations, scouting, and partnerships has been incredible. It took a year to permit a location for our first attraction, and once we became known and associated with Mark, everyone in the country with a piece of land or building to offer had us on speed dial. You wouldn't be wrong to say the business idea was always going to succeed with or without Mark Cuban's investment, but its rising valuation to almost $100 million today definitely had a lot to do with Carbone coming into the tank. So we've seen a case of an investment over a million dollars become one of the show's best investments ever. Let's see how this next one turned out. Next up is a solution to a common anxiety for electric vehicle owners. Coming on the premiere of Season 12 of Shark Tank, Spark Charge is the company with a portable electronic charging device for electric vehicles. Founded by Joshua Aviv and Christopher Ellis in 2017. Aviv, a data scientist with previous experience from many technological startups, served as the company's CEO, while Ellis, a college grad of electrical engineering, went on to be CTO thanks to his vast knowledge of battery management systems. The device, which the duo coined the world's first and only portable, modular, and ultra-fast EV charger, is the brainchild of Joshua Aviv, who got that idea during his college days. He then proceeded to do a lot of research and gain experience at these startups before partnering with Chris Ellis to create Spark Charge. As of 2017, when the company was founded, electric vehicles had already hit the market and were proven to be a very lucrative market. So Aviv and Ellis were able to raise a lot of money for their business even before Shark Tank. They raised a million dollars during a speed round in October 2018, 2.4 million during a venture round about a year later, and a lot more in the years that followed. To say the least, business was going quite well for the co-founders. So Chris and Josh, all confident, came back to the tent with an EV and their product, the Rody. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Josh. And we're two of the co-founders of Spark Charge based in Somerville, Massachusetts. We're here today seeking a million dollars for a 6% stake in our company. They immediately told the Sharks that they were looking for a million for 6% of the company. Definitely not as outrageous as Melissa's pitch, but it's still a lot, even for the tank standards. They then go on to explain their business model to the Sharks. Apparently, the founders, through their Spark Charge company, used to lease the batteries to companies like AAA in order to market to its customers. So technically, there's manufacturers who still depended on other companies to be their middleman. This was due to the very high cost of production. Just one unit of roadie costs a whopping $2,500 to make. Yup, that's a whole lot. So per module, our cost of goods are roughly around uh, $2,500. Okay, so it's 150 bucks per month per module. Yep. Yes. The two go on to say that they leased a unit of the device to a company for a $1,000 deposit and a fee of $150 a month for months to come. Do the math and you'll see it'll take a full month for the founders to get their full manufacturing cost back on a single product. As you'd expect, the Sharks disagreed with the entire business setup because who wouldn't? However, the two were soon able to impress these Sharks by mentioning that the company already made half a million dollars in sales over the previous six months and was on track to make a million dollars by the end of the year. Wait, 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 yep. wait, wait, one second. I don't know anything about this. I'm out. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Impressed as they all seemed, Damon John was quick to drop out of this one, stating he didn't know much about the whole EV industry. Next was Kevin O'Leary, whose primary issue was the leasing model the co-founders had pitched. Now, this particular episode had renowned entrepreneur and businessman Blake Mikoski as a guest shark, but he also bowed out on the chance to invest in Spark Charge. Mikoski stated that his reason for not investing was that he doubted the company could produce the roadie device at a more affordable price as a consumer product. And to be fair, that's a pretty understandable excuse. Here's the thing, though. Despite losing three of the sharks, Aviv and Ellis had done enough to gain the interest of the remaining two, Mark Cuban and Lori Greiner. The two believed Spark Charge could be developed into a multi-million dollar business, so they decided to go into the deal together, provided the co-founders were willing to to tweak their proposal a little bit. So we would go 500, 500, 7%, 7%. Right, right? Five, five and two basically. We got a deal. Joshua
Alicia and Chris accepted to alter their initial offer and agreed with Lori and Mark for a shared $1 million and 10% equity with 4% advisory shares as well as places on the board of the company. As you'd expect, the two men left the tank very pleased to have gotten such massive investments. And years after their appearance, the company is still going strong. Although online their website says that their product is only available by registered businesses, this company has developed into one of the biggest Shark Tank businesses ever. That might not be a surprise given the growth and seismic progress of the EV market worldwide. However, this company has become way more successful than anyone could have foreseen. After getting on Shark Tank, the founders sought to grow the company's manufacturing unit and market it. They also even got more mouthwatering investments the following years, starting with $21 million raised in a venture round in November 2021 to 100000 funding from LG Nova in June 2022 and a wild $23 million investment in a Series A round the month before. This massive amount came from a team of seven investors, led by Pendulum Holdings and Tail Venture Partners. SparkCharge was also able to provide services to 13,000 people across the world in less than two years after the company's pitch. They partnered up with great internationally recognized car manufacturers like Hertz, Uber, Kia, and Ford. And that's not all. By August of 2022, the company had already expanded to more than 12 cities in California, having signed a deal to promote Rody for mobile charging service ordered and paid for via a new app with all state insurance. And we can't leave out the fact that the founder and CEO, Josh Aviv, received the Entrepreneur of the Year New England Program Awards in 2022, and in the same year, raised an additional $29 million in their Series B round from the Mark Cuban company. Apparently, Griner is no longer actively involved in the business, but Mark is very much involved. Speaking about the company years after this episode aired, the billionaire said, When Spark Charge appeared on Shark Tank, I knew they were on the cusp of something game-changing. As an electric vehicle owner myself, getting my car charged while I do other things is priceless. Let's just say Cuban got that spot on. From having a $5 million annual revenue in 2021, the company has now reached a valuation of way over $110 million. How impressive is that? The best part for the two founders is the demand for electric vehicles is projected to surpass $350 billion by 2024, meaning people will always need to charge their vehicles. And as long as Spark Charge keeps up the quality, they just might have landed on a gold mine. And that's two out of two right there. But you know what they say, two times is a coincidence, three times is a pattern. So let's check out that last business that got a million dollar investment on Shark Tank. Next up is a stylish way to relax. Joe Demon and Rachel Connors came on the tank with season 11 and their yellow leaf hammocks. Joe and Rachel weren't just business partners, but also a couple who had come up with the idea for hammocks during a backpacking trip in Southeast Asia. Joe noticed the comfort provided by the high quality hammocks weaved by the Mulberry tribe and just wanted to take this chair of luxury to a bigger scale. Now what made these swinging chairs stand out other than their obvious comfort is that they served as a social statement and a way to bring economic opportunities to rural communities. That's because the hammocks are actually handmade and signed by the mothers in rural Thailand. With Joe Denham having quit his finance job for the hammock business, the couple ventured out to work, and the Yellow Leaf Hammocks Company made an impressive sum of $860,000 in sales in the year before filming. The company also got to partner with Virgin Cruise Lines to provide hammocks for their ships. Obviously, they were doing very well for a startup, but the couple had hoped to help more people in Thailand, meaning that they needed more money, hence their appearance on the tank. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm the Chief Enthusiasm Officer. <laughs> and I'm Joe, and I'm the Chief Relaxation Officer. We're seeking $400,000 in exchange for 7% of our company. The two showed up here and announced that they were looking for $400,000 for 7% stake in their company, Yellow Leaf Hammocks. 
After showing the sharks the hammock and telling them it could fit someone as tall as 7 feet with a diameter of 3.5 feet, Denim announced the social nature of their products. As soon as he revealed his inspiration behind the idea and how this hammock business was a way of financially empowering locals in Thailand, all the sharks became interested. Joe continued giving off financial statistics of this company, announcing that they projected to make $1.3 million at the end of the year. Almost immediately, Guest Shark and Kind Snacks founder Daniel Lubetsky decided he'd heard enough and made the first offer. Now, Daniel wanted 33% of the company for a million, and he defended his offer by making reference to many other socially impactful businesses he runs. With the founders not so keen on losing a third of their business, Lori chipped in with a $400,000 for 20% offer, to which the entrepreneurs responded with a counter offer for both Griner and Lubetsky worth $1 million for a 25% deal, as well as joining the Hammock family. Lubetsky prefers half a million for 25 and gets countered at 600,000 for 14, which prompts Robert to make an offer of 400,000 for 15% equity. The couple seem to prefer working with Daniel, however, and when they announce that they want to raise more money in the future, Lori offers a loan of $200,000 and fully funded purchase orders for 15% equity. What's the minimum percentage and what dollar do you want? What do you do? $1 million for 25%. As the couple don't look keen on any of these offers, Lubetsky asks for the maximum equity these entrepreneurs were willing to give up. They replied with a quarter, and he was more than happy to take the deal of a million dollars for 25% equity. Having explained how his experience in running not-for-profit-only businesses could help Yellow Leaf Hammocks, Denim and Connor struck the seven-figure deal with Daniel and left the tank beaming from ear to ear. Unlike the other two businesses, Yellow Leaf Hammocks hasn't become a multinational corporation or brought in hundreds of millions, but the business is definitely doing well. The first few months after getting on the tank were really successful, as this company received $250,000 in sales in the first month and $1.5 million at the end of the fifth month. However, the global pandemic caused them to take a major hit, and the company couldn't use their cruise ships. That resulted in Yellow Leaf switching to a more direct-to-consumer sale through the company's website and Amazon. The founders have also been featured by Good Morning America, Oprah's Favorite Things, Forbes, as well as many other publications and shows. The Yellow Leaf team has become a major economic help to the Mulberry tribe. With over 400 weavers in Thailand, the company also has new products like the adjustable hammock stand, which is significantly more affordable. There's also the Vista, which is a lighter chair, half the weight of the original yellow leaf hammock, and comes with pockets for storage and a carrying case. With many more variations of the Thailand-made hammock now on the market, this business has made over $15 million in sales in less than five years since Lubetsky's investment and is worth about $4 million. And like we said earlier, it's not as groundbreaking as the previous two, but definitely still a top-tier investment from our sharks.